Hello, it is a cold, very cold, very windy evening here, but we are at Twin Lakes. We're at Twin Lakes for Extreme Scream Park 2017. We came here last year for the first time and we had a cracking time. And we've been invited back this time to uh, review the park again and see exactly what's going on for this year. I have to say, I can't remember what's new and what's existing. The park is opening in 15 minutes, so We'll be heading over there in 15 minutes. We do know that the tower you can see in the background, that is a Skyflyer, that is new for this year. Again, I don't actually know whether it's part of the theme park or whether it's just here for the event. So I'm really in the know going into this vlog, so I do apologize for that. I am sorry, guys. We'll catch up as the evening goes on. But we are expecting scares tonight, we are expecting screams, and we're expecting to go through that incredible hotel with 50 rooms that I swear to God took about an hour to walk through. Brilliant, brilliant it was last year. Cannot wait for it. That's the one we're looking forward to the most. But, you know, we've been looking forward to a lot of mazes over the last few weeks, and other ones have come in and surprised us. There is a clown maze here. I'm not going to say anything negative about the clown maze, because we've done some cracking clown mazes already, so this one now has got such a high bar to live up to, and we're expecting it to do that. So, Extreme Screen Park right behind us, opens in 15 minutes, we're going to get our tickets, go in, and we'll join you there. So we are here in Extreme Screen Park, we've got an entry, we've got our little uh, kind of what mazes we got tonight. So, Ashell Penitentiary, we know that's quite a brutal maze, lots of swearing, lots of kind of physical activity, we like that. Brand new for this year, the Who Do Voodoo, can't wait for that because it's replaced the maze, possibly the only one we didn't like last year, so we really can't wait for that. Um, Revenge of the Zombie Clowns, that's a clown maze, but they've got zombies, we're going to like that. The Stilton Hall Hotel is the one I'm looking forward to the most. This is absolutely huge, this maze. And you know, I say it's a shame we can't film in there. To be quite honest, I think we'd run out of memory if we did. The Pie Factory was brilliant last year. Even had pigs in the queue line. That's what I remember of that. And the village. Now then, I say we're looking forward to the hotel the most. The village, we've heard so many good things about the village. Um, and it seems to be part outdoors, part indoors. It's already dark. You can hear chainsaws in the background. We've got our VIP tickets. We are off now. And I think we're going to start with Hoodoo Voodoo, one of the new mazes for 2017. Keep rolling, we'll walk around here, we can hear the chainsaw. So let's go and see him, shall we? So we got to walk around there. We're going to walk around. There's a lot of scared people here. But I think this is the way. I don't know, is this the way? We love it. They're not after us and we're not scared. They're after the people that have just run into the shop to get out of the way of them, which is brilliant. So as we come up here, you can see some of the street actors actually. We'll turn around now. Some of the street actors and Hoodoo Voodoo just over there. This ride uh, is the one for the attraction. I don't know if it's a permanent one or not. Might be actually. Actually looks permanent, maybe it is a permanent one for the attraction. Quite a small one, so there's a little sky float they got called Excalibur. I have to say, we need to check the map. We try to find a map on the way in because we're not really too sure what's new at Twin Lakes this year. And they tend to open rides during the summer rather than the beginning of the year, so it may well have been missed. But yeah, it's free tonight. It's part of the entry fee. I believe there's teacups over there which are also part of it. Have a quick pan to the right here where the zombie clowns are. But we're going to start over there in Hoodoo Voodoo. So we come down to the back of the park. We've had a change of heart. We're going to start at the back of the park and work our way forward. So we are definitely starting with the Pie Factory, which was one of the mazes returning from last year. This is kind of your eatery area. Behind us now, which we'll turn around, is the Ash Hill Penitentiary. And apparently the new maze of Village is up here. So let's go up and have a look. Let's go and uh, see what's going on around the corner. So when you look straight ahead, you can see a lot of flashing strobe lights here. And some, oh, this is a lo lovely effect for it. Look at this. A little bit of fire. Just stand it like a little bit of fire. <laughs> of course, this place during the, uh, during the week, and during the year, I say during the week, it's open more than a week. This is a theme park. This isn't just a um, kind of a farm like some of the other ones are. So, you know, space-wise, where we've gone to a couple of uh, events in the last couple of um, weeks where you can see it all from where you enter, here we've had to walk. Quite scary they do, don't they? 
looking quite scary up there looking quite scary so we've had to walk to get around the park because there's a lot more going on here than what there is at the standard kind of farm mazes um, you know as a theme park it's got the rise as we already said built in uh, as part of the attraction and there's other farms and bits and pieces as well attached so it's a lot bigger a lot better experience but let's go up and have a look so there's the village hmm. not sure how I feel about the village we're going to start in the pie factory. Okay, a little bit screwed already. No ugly people. We're still going to give it a bash, see if we get in. We're not good enough for you. Not until it's darker. Okie dokie. So we're going to wait for the village until it gets a little bit darker because um, it is quite, although we've had to switch the light on here, it is quite light still, not massively light, but we've heard so many good things about that maze that we definitely don't want to do it until it's pitch, pitch black. I remember they're being picked around here somewhere. Back of this queue. So when we compare it to the maze we started with down the bottom, obviously it's a little bit quieter up here, which is why we're up here. We're going to cut the light now and respect the fact that this is a uh, oh, talk down, a scare maze. And here we are, going down. So this is the entrance to the pie factory, just here. And we're gonna see you the other side. That, that was the pie factory that we've just been through. Now we get a little bit in the queue line, as you can see. Uh, it's quite kind of, um, you know, it's quite a long queue line. It's quite a long walk before you actually get inside the maze. Once inside, it is really quite intense in there. There are some real dark spaces. I mean, you kind of walk through four or five rooms. We'll watch these people run out first. If they're gonna run. They're loving it. So you walk through four or five rooms where relatively nothing happens. It kind of puts you in a little bit of suspense. Sometimes when you're in the middle of a maze and nothing happens, you know, it's kind of a bit like, where is everyone? But on this, we walked through, we'd already spoken to someone, someone had signed our ticket. We kind of walked through and all of a sudden this woman just jumped, just jumped at me. I have to say, I did jump. I don't jump very often, but I did jump. And uh, it's a good job we can't record inside the page because the ma language I used is not broadcastable for YouTube, or at least it shouldn't be. Shouldn't be swearing in your videos. And I wouldn't have sworn in it, but I would have done if it was live. From here, you kind of go deep into the factory. Uh, it's, it's really weird because you're kind of walking through a house which is, you know, really messed up. There's blood all over the walls, there's guts everywhere. You know, really disgusting. Again, there's a lot of tight corners, a lot of tight gaps, bits of wood kind of poking out. You're going through gaps this size, you're squeezing through furniture. You know, it's, it's a real like adventure, if you will. So like a, you're exploring a place you're trying to get out that you shouldn't be in. From here, you kind of go into the factory itself where they're preparing meat. And you know, there is, you go into an outdoor bit and there is a really annoying loud bang. Again, we kind of all jumped. There were four of us in the group. We all jumped. He, banged this container so loud from the other side we couldn't see him we didn't see him until we got inside and we all jumped and the floor isn't particularly even so there's always a good chance you could fall over at that point we were holding on for dear life it wasn't a problem back inside again they're kind of popping out of everywhere you have the uh, cushion curtains to go through and once you've gone through those you then get someone else that's kind of jumping out on you we've been sprayed in the face with water there are some lighting effects in there, kind of some uh, you know, electric effects on the wall, loud bang noises. It is all about jumps and scares in there. And I tell you now, it does a fantastic job of doing so. As you just heard at the end, and you probably saw, you were chased out by a chainsaw. We love a good chainsaw ending. This maze has a good ending, good double ending to be fair, because the final room where they're spraying things at you and coming out of fridges and coming out of kind of bases and really jumping to make you, you know, really scaring you to make you jump, is follow through with the chainsaw. And you can hear the banging in the background and you may be able to hear some of the screams as well. Massive thumbs up for that maze. We don't remember it being that long last year. We know we enjoyed it last year, but this year, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It's gonna be hard to top that already. And that's only maze one, but where should we go next? Let's go find out. Right, 
Right, so we've just come out of Ashell Penitentiary. There's the exit there. Very similar to last June, honestly. Um, we've kind of gone in. Uh, I haven't been called sugar tits ever, actually. I, I say, you know, recently. I've never been called sugar tits. Uh, I was uh, accused of um, being having a dome head as well. Might be true. Not for me to say. I'm sure you guys can tell me that. So the maze itself is, um, you know, we actually don't find it that scary inside, but it's very disorientating. I understand why it's classed as one of the better mazes here. You know, there are a lot of fears taken into one in there. The lights are very kind of standard throughout the whole attraction, apart from two areas. So they kind of come on, they flicker, they go off for a good few seconds before coming back on again. And this is continuous throughout the whole maze. There's only two sections that don't do that, which are full in your face strobe sections when you're walking through effectively body bags and body parts hanging from the ceiling. Those parts are just very fast moving strobes and very difficult. So apart from that, they are, they are, the lights are exactly the same all the way through. So there are many, many times where you'll be walking and the lights go out and you just can't see a thing. And sometimes there's little lights, there's kind of, you know, they have the green exit lights which they use as main beams, if you will, to help you guide where you're going. Other times it's completely pitch black. The other one is claustrophobia. So not only is there darkness, it's very claustrophobic in there. There are lots of kind of little gaps to get through. There is the barrels in the middle that are really tight. And there is a huge tunnel section in the middle which you're kind of ducking down for, you know, a good minute to 90 seconds, which, you know, isn't gonna be ideal for anyone, especially when, you know, there's a lot of people in there. It does get batched quite quickly, so you do catch up with the people in front of you but they still manage to pull off some scares along the way because the lights go out so frequently and we're talking sort of, you know, once every eight seconds, but really it's, it's that quick. And when you're in there, we're probably in there for about eight, nine minutes. It's quite a long maze. You know, they have, the actors have time to reset themselves no matter how big the groups are and scare the next people that come in. It's not actor kind of dependent, I would argue, whilst they are in there to do that. You know, the maze is designed around darkness and claustrophobia. You know, it's about cannibalism, so there are people simulating eating people in there and there are a lot of dead bodies hanging about and there are a lot of people behind cages and you know it's kind of like an asylum a new take on an asylum probably to keep the asylum people happy that it's not called asylum we understand why people love it and we're not saying we don't like it we do really really enjoy it in there it's not the scariest maze for us but it is very intense and you know we followed around you know we met groups in front of us people caught up behind us there are a lot of screams in there a lot of people screaming a lot of people have to stop when the darkness comes. A lot of people saying they're scared, a lot of people saying they want to get out. And a lot of people that really did find it quite terrifying. So we've come out, we met a group just as we went in, we come out, they did find it terrifying. Uh, they were telling us they found it terrifying. So yeah, really, really good, really, really good maze. Um, we prefer the pie factory because there are a lot of jumps in there for us, because that's kind of what plays on us. We like the jumps rather than the darkness. The darkness doesn't bother us too much. The claustrophobia in mazes like this, I don't like claustrophobic spaces, but in mazes like this work very well. So the jumps in the pie factory work very, really well. But that, that is an intense maze. And I fully understand why for many people it's possibly the most intense experience in the park we loved it we loved it we're now going to move around here because we kind of come back to the entrance area so i think clowns are next let's go and do zombie clowns Right, so that was the end of the clown zombies. It's a very different take on a zombie and clown maze, to be honest with you. So you go inside, the clowns have been possessed by zombies. Some of them are dead. Some of them have been eaten by other zombies. You know, you've got your standard kind of curtains there, uh, which you kind of have to navigate your way through. Once again, like every other clown maze we've been through, we got lost. We got lost. There's a lot of hooters. Funnily enough, all the clown mazes we've been in so far this year, we've not heard one of those hooters. We've had them in our face, we've had them in our ears, we've had them pointed at us. It's been very, very, very different. Um, thoroughly enjoyable maze, really great fun. Um, not too intense, a good few frights though. Because of all the curtains, uh, anyone that's been in a clown maze, they're all very much laid out the same. A lot of curtains, a lot of kind of dark spaces, a little bit of strobing. Um, you know, they kind of open it and someone's there and they're gonna jump out on you. But thoroughly enjoyable mode. Really, really enjoyed that and I really enjoyed the different take on it as well rather than just having clowns you've got zombie clowns we like zombies um, we're starting to like clowns after this year but I didn't really say that but we're starting to like clowns after this year so we'll have a look at the exit as people coming out oh my god shit <laughs> 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 
So they like to have a bit of a laugh. I do like to have a bit of a laugh, that's the exit. The kind of finale bit is beforehand where there's a couple of them that kind of take you around rather than having it right at the end there. Um, the park is actually very dark, it's very dark around here. The amount of people we've seen try and go in there thinking it's the entrance when it's not, um, is loads, absolutely loads. But yeah, quite enjoyable. We're now going to head around to Hulu Voodoo. So we've just been inside Hoodoo Voodoo. Now the mate that was there last year, I actually can't remember what it was. Um, it was terrible, absolutely terrible. You kind of went in, it was really confined spaces. There were no jumps in there. It really felt like a children's maze. In fact, I think the maze may have been open during the day for the kids' entertainment. So, Hoodoo Voodoo, which you see behind, the new maze for this year. We didn't really have high hopes for it, to be honest with you. I mean, we saved the, uh, the village and the hotel for last, because we didn't have much hopes for this being its replacement. Oh my God. Oh my god. It's it's the scariest maze we've been in this year. Now, we didn't know it was a bag overhead maze. Now again, for those that know we don't particularly like the clown mazes, we don't find them that scary, although we've had great times them this year. This is our first over the bag. Uh, no, this is our second actually, we went to Tully, sorry. This was an, uh, a bag on the head maze, and it was really, really different. In fact, quite panickingly terrifying. Now, you kind of go in, um, you get greeted, you put a bag on your head, you grab your rope. Nothing unusual there. Anyone that's done a uh, kind of bag on head um, maze will know that's how you've got to find it. You wouldn't find your way around otherwise. The bags are pitch black. There is no, you know, some of the ones we've seen at Tully's you can actually make out the figure in front of you. Maybe it's because it's quite light in there. Who knows? But on here, you couldn't. You couldn't make out who was in front of you. You couldn't make out anything at all. You walk as normal. To be honest, for about 60 seconds, not a lot happened. You wouldn't actually know you were in a scare maze. You're just like walking around in the dark. And then all of a sudden, you can hear the actors and you can hear a lot of music in the background. You know, it's not quiet in there by any stretch of the imagination. And of course, this is where this part does allow touching by the actors. Obviously, you're not allowed to touch them. Do not touch them, but they are allowed to touch you. And it works really, really well in Hoodoo Voodoo. So they will literally come up to you on your face and go like that. They will grab your legs. They will grab your arms. They will poke you in the ear. They will poke you in the mouth. They do all kinds of things. And these are completely random. You cannot see them coming. You do not know they're there until they touch you. There might be an, you know, an issue of some people lashing out. I really hope there's not because you know the maze as a whole is brilliant but it made me jump. Actually made me scream at two points. Never screamed in a maze. Ever screamed in a maze, ever. Never screamed in a maze. I'm gonna say that one more time. Never screamed in a maze. Twice in there, twice. That might be more about me than it is about anyone else. So you kind of go around, you know, the actors are touching you. They've got kind of air guns, which they're blasting in your face. They're blasting on your side. They're blasting all around you. And then there's the floor. You know, this is something that perhaps isn't done enough on these bags on head mazes. You kind of walk in a straight line. Now Tully's does variate very slightly onto gravel, but this one really variates. So you've got some real steep inclines, which obviously leads to going down as well. You've got like these mattresses, and we don't just mean like a treading on soft, we mean like depth mattresses, which you're treading on. And it makes it really, really difficult to walk, focus on the rope, and see the person just about to shoot you with the air cannon in the side of your face. Really, really difficult. You've got some gravel, and you've got some really like, hard gravel as well to the point where you really kind of need to put your foot on these large kind of boulders to kind of get through them and then there's a moving floor so it feels like you're walking on sort of wooden rollers it's really weird they kind of as you step on it they move back and forwards very very off put and again you've got a bag on your head you can't see a thing the floor's moving you're trying to grab onto a rope really 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 different and then the end of the first part of the maze. And I have to say, you know, the maze went on for a long period of time in a good way, a real good way. Must have been five or six minutes. It felt like it went on forever. 
Then all of a sudden, that's a big spoiler, the person just grabs the bag off your head and I screamed in her face. Wasn't expecting it, wasn't expecting it at all. And at that point we thought it was over, but it wasn't over. Because then you kind of get a bit of um, scenery to do with kind of voodoo. So you go into a nice brightly coloured room with uh, the kind of voodoo dolls hanging from the ceiling. There's a few jump scares, there's Pete actors behind to kind of get you there where perhaps they weren't used as much in the first half of the maze. They're definitely used in the second half of the maze. You then go outside by the side of the teacups and you kind of think, oh, this is a bit of, um, must be the end. It's kind of leading you into a full sense of security because you soon back inside again for more jump scares, you know, and the second half of it, they are hiding. They are hiding. You've got nice wooden blocks and they are right behind it and they are chasing you, hiding, screaming in your ear, in your face, you know, again, they've got air guns, they're touching you, they touch your sides, they touch kind of wherever they want, within reason, obviously, wherever they want to touch you really really different maze and I have to say the bag is quite tight over your head and of course we're used to be having bags over our head because we do do these mazes we're not used to them being quite so tight and we're certainly not used to them being quite so dark however wouldn't change it for anything but first maze I've actually felt a little bit panicked you know when people were touching my face for the first time I couldn't see what was going on they were touching my legs they were blasting air you know air in my face I actually felt a bit panicked that I couldn't take the bag off that's what I want. I don't want extreme. I don't, I say extreme, it's extreme, extreme part, extreme part, but I don't want kind of the really stupid ones that go across the UK, we have to sign waivers. That is kind of what I want. That is a screen park, you know, excellent maze, and we thoroughly enjoyed it. So far, my favourite maze of the year. So far, my favourite maze of the year. And I didn't think I'd say that from that. We've got a zombie coming. Let's have a look at the zombie. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So there's a lot of street entertainers around. We'll try and find some more before the end of the video. But now we're going to go up. I think the hotel's next. We do want to save the village to last. We are definitely going to save the village to last. So now it's time for the Stilton Hotel. So that, that is the queue for Hoodoo Voodoo. We're right round the back by the exit of the Stilton Hotel. That must be a good hour, hour plus queue. If you come, it's worth it, 100% worth it. Now around the corner here, you're gonna see our next destination. Here is the hotel and Hell Spa. So let's get involved, let's go do it. we saved what we thought would be the best two mazes for last and neither of them disappointed. So first the Stilton Hotel, um, it's a firm favourite here, over 50 rooms, two levels um, and it is designed for frights, you know, it's too much to go into, it really is too much to go into but it's effectively a really warped kind of uh, decrepit hotel that you go through and it is designed for scares, 100% jumps and scares all the way through and again it didn't disappoint, you know, and. I, I always try to have my wits about me when I go into mazes, and I love it when I'm taken by surprise. We talked about Hoodoo Voodoo, really took me by surprise. The whole maze concept, everything, took me by surprise. And this is very much the same. The Stilton Hotel is kind of, you know, you're, there's so much to look at. There's, there's never too much to look at, but when you're trying to avoid scares, there's, there's too much to look at. 
it's just everywhere. There's detail everywhere. So there's curtains, there's laundry. You know, you walk into a room, there's a bed, there's a wardrobe, there's, you know, drawers and everything. And your eyes are drawn everywhere and you can't see where the scares are coming from. And that's one of the best parts about this maze. You can't see where they're coming from. You know, the, we walked into the coffin area and we're so busy looking at the coffins, wondering if the coffins are gonna open, that I didn't think someone from underneath the table would be grabbing my legs. And it scared the bejesus out of me. It really did scare me. And it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. You know, there's strobe areas, there's moving floors again, there's like mattress type floors, there's complete darkness. It has everything, the hotel has everything. It's a highly recommended maze. It is again one of our favourites. Some of our favourite mazes are here. The evening hasn't disappointed. So then we saved um, the village to last. So the village, new for this year. We're actually not sure what was there last year. We can't quite put our finger on it um, or whether there was anything there last year at all. Now, with the village, you kind of, um, it's, it's a bit like the American maze. So we've been to Halloween Horror Nights and you kind of walk, you, everyone just sort of walks through at once. So there's no kind of groups or there's no individuals or anything. You're walking through at once. And it does make the scares very difficult. But, you know, these mazes aren't all about scares. We've been in some very creepy mazes. Things like Demonica that we went in at Burton wasn't necessarily scary, but very, very creepy, very, very dark. And this one worked very much the same way. It was very, very creepy. So you kind of walk into, um, um, it's a bit like a, I don't know, a bit like a house kind of area and it's all again a bit kind of demented and you know lots going on and and there are actors in there that are designed to scare you obviously but there are actors in there interacting with you. Now they are kind of, this is about the breeding with or the cross contamination, it's very difficult to tell what it's about, between scarecrows and humans. So it kind of starts off with people looking like um, probably more human kind of scarecrows and at the end they look like crows it's it's quite demented possibly the middle part is one of the most demented scenes we've seen in a scare maze and that's the school you walk through kind of a, a, a overtaken school with you know actors in there they're not children but they're, they're obviously short actors in there that are pretending to be children asking if you'll be their mummy you know it's just really really weird and it the detail, the level of detail in this maze, we probably haven't seen since we've been to America. It is that good. Um, you know, every every kind of base area that you go into has full of detail. I mean, the school was messed up, proper messed up. We can't quite, you know, tell you how messed up it was. But again, in a, you know, for a scare attraction in a real great way. The final one, it goes through a uh, professor's lab, and again, it's messed up, absolutely messed up. There are a few outdoor kind of sections in between that kind of take you between scenes, if you will. And when you're walking as a group, you know, some people are gonna get scared, some people you'll see it, some people they come for you, so it's great in that. The final scene, you literally walk into a massive barn area, and it's full of scarecrows, and it's full of ones sitting down, and it's full, obviously, of real actors as well. But you don't know who's who. Is uh, continuous strobe lights, kind of flash in so one minute they're there next minute they're not and you literally kind of walk in lines all the way through the barn and it's is, it is kind of a bit of a free-for-all you don't really know what's going on you don't really know who's going to jump out of you one minute you'll be there and there'll be people sitting down obviously scarecrows sitting down mannequins and the next minute someone will be in your face it definitely wasn't the most scary maze of the night but it was easily the most creepy maze of the night you know the the scenes alone and certainly detail it is the most detailed maze i've probably seen at a uk theme park without a shadow of a doubt you know they, they've left no stone unturned when you go into these buildings and you kind of are really immersed in the school the house and the um the professor lab theming at the end and even the barn at the end you know very simple theming but such detail such such detail I will keep going on about the school, but when you see children's pictures on the wall and it looks like a classroom and there's desks and everything, and then you realize there's you know, a bit of blood and there's some really freaky things going on, it is just warped, but brilliant. And you know, much like we said about Burton the other day, this park has very different mazes, very different mazes. Let's get our, um, our book out again. So, you know, the Ashell Penitentiary is a real full-on maze, a real in-your-face maze with the actors, you know, they are swearing, they are shouting at you, they will touch you, they will push you a little bit. It is a really full-on sort of prison, um, you know, cannibal-type maze. Hoodoo Voodoo is exceptional, absolutely exceptional. Revenge of the Zombie Clowns, it's a different take on a clown maze, and it's nice, it's nice to see something a little bit braver and a little bit different. <coughs> Stilton Hotel, the, again, the length of this maze is incredible. And to be fair, all the mazes are in real good lengths tonight. Um, I, I think that one is possibly the longest, the hotel, but probably Hoodoo Voodoo came in 
second. It might be quite level. It might be the case that Hoodoo Voodoo was slightly longer because of the speed you walk through it with the bag on your head. The Pie Factory is all about jumps and scares, and it does an amazing job. It did an amazing job on me, and not very many mazes do an amazing job on me. And then there's the village, which is sheer level of detail. So then the village, obviously the detail in the village is just exceptional, it really is exceptional. There are two rides open as well. You've seen Excalibur, which I believe is a new ride for Twin Lakes for this year, and the Teacups ride. You know, it is, it is over a vast area. We would love to visit this park, and we were gonna do it today, but we decided we wouldn't do it during a Halloween kind of event area. We really wanna see what this uh, park is like once the Halloween season's gone and what this area is used for because it spans the vast span is it's just massive absolutely massive but yeah we're gonna have a little think now and then we're gonna go out to the car and we'll summarize it was a late wet night at Twin Lakes and Extreme Screen Park last night and I can tell you now it was a night to remember now we said if you've seen our Burton vlog that Burton was brilliant five completely different mazes well, Extreme Screen Park sits exactly in the same place with the extra maze and a couple of rides to add. So, our thoughts of it, brilliant event, possibly, in fact, easily our favourite event we've attended this year. And it's probably our last one as well, whilst we might have a few smaller parks to kind of do, and we may well have Torment as well down in Gunwolf Keys. This was, without a doubt, the most complete package. Six top quality mazes, and we mean top quality mazes. Um, you know, from the Pie Factory, which is jump scares, dark strobes, uh, to the Stilton Hotel, which is just forever, absolutely forever of, you know, looking around you and finding out where the next jump's going to come from. And it was just so good, so good inside. But Hoodoo Voodoo stands out for us as not only the new maze of the year, but our favourite maze of the year. Um, a completely new take, as far as I'm concerned, on a bag over your head. Um, you know, it's tight, it's very dark. You know, the time I did lose the rope and had to quickly pull my hood up, it was quite bright in there, so that the hoods were brilliant. They really were brilliant at keeping the light out. You know, the kind of the ending to the hooded part and then even a maze afterwards as well, rather than just sort of hood off, off you go, or a couple of corridors. You know, this had a substantial piece afterwards as well of jumps and scares and strobe lights and various other bits of scenery. So our best thumbs up goes to Hoodoo Voodoo. Brilliant night at Extreme Screen Park, and we want to thank them very much for inviting us because their hospitality was brilliant. The staff were absolutely brilliant. You know, as always, all these scare attractions we've been to, the actors have been absolutely fantastic. You know, it's a real credit. It's a real credit to them that, you know, for some of them, this is the only thing they do every year. Some of them do other things. Some of them do other theatre that, you know, theme park goers wouldn't see them in. But for Halloween, they are just brilliant. So massive thumbs up to Extreme Screen Park. Brilliant night. Highly recommended again. You've got a little bit of time to get down there if you're watching this and it's still Halloween. If not, make sure you get down there for next year because this is a place you do not want to miss. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.